Hey channel, Fernando from SkyFi Audio. Today I've got a pretty neat piece of equipment from Macintosh from the late uh, 90s, early 2000s. It's an MA2275. Uh, it is um, an integrated uh, tube amplifier uh, that was made in very low production numbers and uh, a bit of a unique rare bird in the world of Macintosh. So I thought I'd spend a few minutes going over it uh, some of the features and what makes this uh, somewhat special. Um, in the world of Macintosh, in the naming convention, um, the first letters generally designate what type of device it is. Uh, MA is, is reserved for integrated amplifiers, MC is used for amplifiers, C is for preamps, MX is for uh, preamp tuners, etc., etc. So this is in fact an an integrated amplifier, as uh, you can see. Uh, a good way to understand or recognize an integrated amplifier is by the, the buttons. If it's got a volume control on it, and if you go to the back and it's got speaker outputs on it, chances are it's an integrated amplifier, in this case an MA. So this particular piece is a, it's a 75 watt per channel integrated amplifier, and, um, and what's most unique about it is the fact that the preamplifier stage, so if you can imagine there, this is essentially a one box solution for what typically is two boxes, a preamp and an amp all put together in one. So what's interesting about this is that it uses tubes for both the amplifier state, stage and the preamplifier stage. And that is unusual in the world of Macintosh. I believe this is the only time they ever did that. There are other tubed integrated amplifiers out there, but if you look very closely at the, the circuit design, um, generally they'll have either a solid state a preamp stage or the output stage and tubes on the opposite. opposite. So again, the, the first and only of, of, of all tube integrated from Macintosh. So uh, rated at 75 watts per channel and has a lot of commonality with the uh, MC275, which is probably their best selling tube amplifier. The MC275 is um, in naming convention, if you dissect it, it's 2 times 75, so 75 watts per channel. Uh, and MC stands for uh, amplifier in, in the naming convention. It's a pretty large piece. It's, it's almost, you know, 20 inches deep. It's heavy. It weighs in at over 70 pounds. And the uh, production quantities were pretty low. They didn't make that many of these pieces. One, because it was heavy. Two, because it was expensive. And three, because um, the focus for integrated amplifiers at the time was mostly in, in Asia and Europe. The American market was not that hungry for integrated amplifiers. Now that's changed quite a bit lately. Uh, there are tons of great integrated amplifiers into the marketplace right now, but back in the late 90s, early 2000s, there really weren't that many, especially with tubes. That was an era where, you know, solid stage state was ruling. So 75 watts into both 2, 4, and 8 ohms, and that's characteristic of, of a tube amplifier, the ability to deliver the same power across all the different impedances, and that's mostly because of the output transformers. Uh, and the magic sauce in any Macintosh amplifier, uh, the output transformers that are able to deliver uh, the same power across all the loads. And you can see them here flanking the, the top. Uh, this is the left channel and this is uh, right channel, and described as a unity coupled output transformer. So if you look closely at these labels, they'll have caps. You know, they represent the input side of the transformer and then the output side of the transformer and they're labeled into 2, 4, and 8 ohms in here, along with a common conductor. So these here are the output transformers, and this guy right here in the middle is the input transformer. This is what takes your line voltage, your 120 volts, and brings it down to the usable voltage for the amplifier. So looking a little deeper into specs, um, the preamp stage uses uh, four 12AX7 tubes and they're visible right here in the middle. Two of them are for the phono section and two of them are for the preamp state. I'm not quite sure which is which, but here's the grouping of all four of them. Uh, the amplifier itself uses 
a 12AT7, a pair of them, one for each channel, and then a pair of uh, KT88s, or you can also switch them out for 6550s. So again, very similar design and layout to the MC275, especially in the two complement. On the front panel, we've got um, typical Macintosh stuff. Um, you know, a, a great um, glass faceplate with the traditional blue meters and all the writing in green. Uh, the input selector is infinitely rotating, meaning it's really just a selector. There's no switching happening at the selector itself. Switching's happening in the back of the unit somewhere on the PC board. So we've got inputs here for phono, CD2, CD1, tuner, DVD, and tape. So a nice complement of inputs. And bass and treble, which is a really nice feature, especially if we're running uh, vintage speakers. It's nice to be able to boost them up a little bit on the treble and the bass as needed. And these controls are often missing from modern high-end equipment. Um, this allows us to dim the lights in case they bother you at night. And um, designation between watts and hold is, is what the meter is doing. If you, let's see, if I go to an input that's, that's working, uh, you can see the meter is working right now in uh, watts mode. If I switch to hold, it'll actually hold what the highest rating was in the past few seconds. Uh, balance is self-explanatory and then volume right next to it. Down below we've got the recording monitor tone bypass. That's in case you want to bypass these two knobs if you're a purist. It's the best way to do it. Mono combines left and right signals. The mute and then standby. I won't press that. But it's, this has both a, a physical real power button and a standby button which we love. And then a small eighth inch headphone jack. I'm surprised it's eighth inch considering most uh, residential headphones are a quarter inch, but I guess in the early 2000s, things were a bit different. All right, moving on to the back, pretty simple layout. We've got the speaker binding posts we discussed, a common two ohm, four ohm, and eight ohm. So you would pick a red and a black, depending on what best matches your speaker, left channel, right channel, or vice versa. IEC power cord, a fuse, this IR sensor, external sensor, was um, in case you were going to house this in a cabinet, this allowed you to use the remote through the doors, essentially. This is neat. Uh, these jumpers here allow you to separate this into two distinct pieces of equipment. By pulling these jumpers, you could use this as just as a standalone preamp or as a standalone power amp, uh, which is a really neat upgrade path in case you really love the preamp section but you wanted to use a different amplifier, you could use that. Uh, a plethora here of access ports and data ports for connecting other Macintosh equipment. Um, we've got a set of regular outputs and tape outputs for your tape deck. And then one, two, three, four, five, six set of inputs, including this uh, very capable phono section with a ground button next to it or ground connecting bus. And then lastly, we've got a XLR balanced uh, inputs for the CD section, which is nice feature. Uh, here we go, MA 2275 integrated amplifier from Macintosh Laboratories in Bimington, New York, where they are still, in fact, running operations from and building uh, everything they sell. A couple highlights. Um, this is a complete set for us. Uh, it's, it's the first one we've ever seen. It's really the only one that I could find in the market right now. Uh, it is complete set. We've got the box, we've got the remote, we've got the manual, which is uh, right here. We even have the original warranty card dating back to the early 2000s. All right, I think that about covers it. I think I mentioned the weight is at 77 pounds, so it's quite a, quite a heavy piece. And uh, another interesting fact, the total harmonic distortion is measured at a half of a percentage point, which is a bit high for or something of this nature, but it's certainly within acceptable limits. Uh, here's a label identifying its power output rating at 75 ohms, or 2, 4, and 8 ohms, I'm sorry, 75 watts, from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So.
So anyway, I think that about covers it. Um, this piece, um, depending on when you're watching this video, is available on our website at skyfiaudio.com. Um, and uh, please be sure to subscribe if you are enjoying these videos and you want to see more. It will keep us motivated. And thank you for watching.